Are you afraid of me? Because if you're not, you should be. So what are you talking about? Well, uh, reading in the Bible last night, our family devotions, and uh, came across the story of the man that was possessed with devils. Quite a few devils, actually. Legion. And um, something that's very interesting about that story, which is descriptive of a, the life of a Christian. Um, I'm going to go to the Bible here. Luke chapter 8 and verse... Uh, let's see, where is it? Verse 37. Um, it says, the, Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Um, if you don't know the story, I'll tell you a brief synopsis of it. You can read it in Luke chapter 8 and uh, Mark chapter 5, which we'll be going there in just a minute or two here. But the story is that there was a man that was uh, possessed with devils. He was crazy. And um, he, would, he was running around out there without any clothes on naked and and uh cutting himself and they would try to bind him with chains you know try to chain him up take him for help or something probably and and uh, he'd break the chains and the people would try to restrain him and didn't work and uh that stuff is going on today and they just try to say it's mental illness or something but um you know it does happen that people are possessed with devils and and the police you know they'll try to taser the people or try to do whatever and the people break free and run i've seen it there's plenty of videos out there devil possession is real they just say, oh no it's a rare disorder in their mind or something or hmm, yeah uh i know better and you know better too if you're a christian but the point is this guy um was not exactly somebody that you'd want to have around he was out there and living in the among the tombs and crying and cutting himself and things a pretty bad situation and yet when the Lord comes, he casts the devils out of the guy and the guy is clothed and seated and in his right mind and it scares the people. Hmm. Uh, many years ago, back in my mid-twenties, uh, I think I was 26, I think, when I got saved. And uh, before then, I wasn't, you know, possessed with devils or anything. Um, but I wasn't really a good guy. And uh, there were some that were a lot worse than me, obviously. I was pretty clean living and things compared to most. But um, I wasn't exactly a real good person. And yet I got along with the world. The world wasn't afraid of me. But boy, I got saved and uh, wanted to serve the Lord, you know. And, and um, I went out and got my first suit and tie and, you know, and I wanted to go be part of a church someplace and I was real fanatical you know carrying my King James Bible with me and and things and and I started to notice people get were afraid of me and that was so curious to me you know and I'd think you know am I doing something wrong or you know I was kind of a little bit confused by that whole thing that um I'm just out here trying to tell people how to be saved and uh all of a sudden they're you know crossing the street to get away from me and you know, they won't make eye contact with me, and <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I didn't turn into a monster, you know. Well, to them I did, I guess. Um, when the Holy Spirit moves in to you, you will see that people will actually have a fear of you. Um, you say, well, how can that be when you have all the martyrs, people that were killed? Yeah, why do you think they were killed? Because the lost world fears uh a truly saved Christian. You know, if I'm out here walking around and all of a sudden uh, some big black bear or whatever, that's about the most dangerous thing we have, unless you have a moose that's losing his mind or something, but, you know, um, some big black bear all of a sudden comes running out of the woods. I startle him. I walk up on him and scare him. Um, he's going to attack me because he's afraid of me. He's not attacking me for food. And, um, and like I said, it doesn't really happen that much. But, you know, the, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, there's a fear that comes upon lost people. And that fear uh, is because ultimately the fear of the Lord is the beginning of 
wisdom, beginning of knowledge. The Bible teaches that. And people, if they get around a real true saved Christian, they know that that Christian can give them the knowledge that they are a sinner and that they're going to hell when they die. And so they just kind of try to avoid it. I remember going door to door many years ago and uh, me and my partner at the time, you know, two uh, brethren going out. I'm not saying he was that we were married or something. <laughs> not that way. Uh, not those kind of partners. And but we were out there and and uh, we had our suits and ties on and everything. You know, you're supposed to do that as a good Baptist. You know, um, make sure you just wear it all the time because that proves you're an even better Baptist. But uh, you know, we were in our suits and ties carrying our Bibles. And we're going out trying to tell people how to be saved and, you know, invite people to church, the whole thing. And um, and I remember there was this guy, and he's walking towards us on the street. It was in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. He's walking towards us, and he's, you know, looking at whatever, doing things. And he looks up, and he sees us, and he goes, whoop, puts his head down, turns to the side, you know, looks quickly, crosses the street to get to the sidewalk on the other side of the street. And, it, and he's walking on the other side of the street, and he's doing this kind of a thing, and, you know, quick glance back and you know just like we were a bunch of monsters uh yeah watch out uh get away from the crazy christians you know that they're trying to tell you how to be saved and go to heaven when you die you know look out you know um but it's weird it's very weird and uh, you know a lot of people um it's just like they're afraid of me when i'm at the store or something or whatever and uh you know the, the magnets that i put on my vehicles and things with my website on it and uh you know tell people how to be saved if you died tonight would you be in heaven or hell you know believe in the lord jesus christ now shall I be saved i've had that on my vehicle for many years and people you know they'll they'll get way back or they'll pass me and then they go flying i've seen people almost wreck their vehicles to try to get away from the back of my uh vehicle i mean seriously i've seen it a couple times one time up here in the it was the roads were slippery and snowy and the guy out around and he lost control of the car and the car spinning around. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I was going pretty much the speed limit. He was in a two wheel drive car. I was in a, you know, four wheel drive, uh, vehicle at the time. And he risked his life to get away from seeing the gospel. It's, it's bizarre. And again, it's another one of the marks. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What's part of being a new creature? Um, you become a monster to the lost people. I mean, you think some guy, you know, I mean, if some guy came, I'm out here in the woods on my property, and some guy comes running at me and he doesn't have any clothes on and he's cutting himself, he's all bloody from cutting himself, and he's got, you know, and people running after him, hey, wait a second, you know, he's broke the handcuffs or something, he's running at me, <laughs> you know, that i would be a little scared of that i'd say whoa you know okay this is a bad situation but then he comes and he's clothed and in his right mind why would you logically be afraid of that but see that's how lost people are lost people would rather see some woke uh devil in the flesh that um is denying how god made them and hates the bible and hates christians and they're addressed to all kinds of weird things and piercings and all kinds of weird stuff People would rather see that than a Bible-believing Christian than me walking around in a suit and tie or something like that, which I don't bother wearing them anymore. But it's very strange. Very strange indeed. And you'll notice that. Boy, your relatives, they'll love you. Everything will be great. All my nephews and nieces, they just, they loved me. Man, they, I was the coolest uncle around until I got saved. Now I'm, I don't even exist to them. Um... Mark chapter 5, verse 15. <clears throat> and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. <laughs> it's just such a bizarre thing. You know, and you get some, one of these uh, people or whatever else, and they're, they're dressing real weird and doing all this weird stuff, and all of a sudden they'd get saved. And get cleaned up you know and take the weird piercing stuff out and cover up their tattoos or whatever else and they'd hey let me tell you about jesus it'd be Duh. before it's hey man how you doing hey yeah 
get saved. Oh, stay away from me. Oh, 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 you're scaring me. Please. <laughs> Don't frighten me. Just such an odd thing. So, um, I am telling you these things because I want to make sure that my viewers understand what true biblical salvation is. True biblical salvation is not life enhancement. <laughs> All right? That's what modern churches do. Modern churches, they want your money. And so they will deceive you into thinking that come to church and you can have a better life and your best life now, you know, and all this other stuff. And 40 days of purpose. God has a purpose for you. God has a wonderful life. You have a God-shaped hole in your heart and only Jesus can fill it. And then you'll have a life, you'll get along and you'll have a good marriage and you'll have, oh, no, probably not. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of brethren get genuinely born again and their marriages fall apart. Um, relatives hate them. They lose their job. They, all kinds of different stuff like that. If we suffer, we shall also reign with them. How's that work out for modern Christianity? It doesn't. But see, they don't want to talk about that stuff in these modern church buildings. And if you come along and you say, you know, I, I got saved and people don't want to be around me and, and everybody's, you know, uh, avoiding me and whatever, these modern hirelings will say, well, then you're doing something wrong. Um, why? Well, possibly because some of them are possessed with devils themselves and they feel uncomfortable around you. You know, and I've gone to modern churches too, by the way, after being saved. Um, I've gone there to, you know, kind of put some tracks around and whatever else and try to witness to people. I've gone into these places. They won't make eye contact with me. It's the most bizarre thing in the world. They're, you know, oh, hi, welcome. And I go over and I start talking to them or whatever and they start to... You know, they, they get real nervous and just kind of, like they feel like they should run. And I'm there trying to say, you know, hey, I'd like to talk to you about the Bible or, you know, whatever. Okay, well, hey, it's it nice meeting you. You know, went into this uh, Calvary church or something in uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, many years ago. My wife and I went in there at Christmas time because I wanted to get some video of the they had their articles of incorporation actually painted on the wall. And uh, I wanted to go in and get some video of it. And we ended up getting video of their biometric child tracking system. I did a video on that years ago. Um, and uh, you have to come in and you have to biomet or, uh not biometrically, but you have to get this little chip card thing or whatever so your child can be tracked. You know, pretty creepy. But I remember we went in there and... Um, walking around and everything this is a church you know hey welcome welcome to church and all the stuff and we went in there and uh you know people were just so nervous we'd walk past and i'd smile and hi you know and whatever and, you know this weird thing and i remember there were these security guards and we weren't you know being real weird looking or anything we weren't sneaking around you know let's go over here come on you know nothing like that we're just walking around and, hey how you doing you know and these security guards, they came in there watching us, you know, just looking at us with this, what are you doing here? You know, they could feel it. There's something different between our spirit and their spirit. So weird. So um, if you're scaring people uh, as a Christian, uh, good job. <laughs> you're doing your job. It's working out. Um, that's just part of the thing of being saved. Uh, you will freak people out. They won't want to be around you. They'll cast out your name as evil. I remember Paul wrote about, you know, by evil report. Uh, and good report. Those who are truly saved will want to be around you. There's that fellowship of the Spirit. You just don't want to leave. When you find a real true Christian, you get to talking about the Lord and everything. Such an amazing bond that we have as Christians. But you get around the lost world, oh boy, you're uh, worse than a two-headed monster to them. We are the, another verse of scripture talks about we are the savor of death unto death unto these lost people out there. Life unto life to save Christians, but we're just like zombies to the lost world. So, <laughs> uh, be encouraged, brethren. Um, you're doing right if people don't want to be around you. So that is going to be it. As always, thank you very much for watching.